Hey everyone, I'm back again. Just wanted to give a little update on the little chicks. See if I can go over here and not let everybody out. So this is Miss Donna and her brood. Um, they're they're back. They're in the TARDIS, and they're with the rest of the uh, the Silky crew. We've got Mickey Smith as our rooster. We have Lady Me. Rory. Of course, everybody's been introduced to Miss Donna, and up there is Amy. And so these are the little guys. They're getting big now. They're getting really big. So these are her chicks. <laughs> hey, Miss Amy. How are you doing, girlfriend? Oops, there's an egg down here. Mickey Smith, you got an egg there, bud. Yeah, I know you didn't lay that, but I need to get that. Anyway, so here they are. I thought I'd give you guys a, a look, an update on the chicks. So she's still protective of them right now. Um, she's still, uh, of course, the uh, the other hens and, and even Mickey Smith, he, he take, they don't bother the chicks. So, but if anybody does get too close, she'll, she'll definitely run them off and say, hey, leave my babies alone. But they're doing really good. They're getting up and down the ladder. And they're roosting at night, just like a chicken's supposed to. So, anyway, so this is the brood. I have everybody locked in their pens. Because I have a snake back here uh, right now. And these pens are snake proof. A snake cannot get into these pens. So, um, yeah. I have a, quite a few eggs that are missing in the country clucker. And the reason I know that is because I was putting some fake eggs up in the, uh, the nesting boxes because I have this new group here that is gonna start laying eggs. This, this, is, this is my new group. They're gonna start laying eggs just about any point. And so I've got some fake ceramic eggs that I put up here in the nesting boxes. Well, that one's occupied. But anyway, I'll put them up here in this, these nesting boxes. And um, they look just like regular eggs. And so that way when the girls start to lay their eggs, they'll see that egg there and think, oh, okay, I'm supposed to lay here. So, you know, kind of a monkey see, monkey do type situation. Well, my ceramic eggs disappeared. And I know that the chickens can't carry them off. And I know I haven't moved them and neither has anybody in my family. So the only other thing that I could think of that could get back here kind of unnoticed, especially with two roosters out here with, with, the, with this group, would be a snake. And so I've had snakes before. I'm not afraid of them, quite honestly. Um, I actually, actually value them because they do us much more good than they do harm. So anyway, so if I lose a couple eggs to, you know, a snake in exchange for, you know, keeping the mice and rats at bay and whatnot, that's okay. So whatever snake ate my ceramic eggs, um, that meal probably is not going to go down very well. But since I know, or I'm very suspicious, that I have a snake running around here, the little girls, and what I mean by little... Um, I'm locking up my thing again. Um, the Bantam girls uh, have this hardware cloth here. It's like this, so a snake can't get in, can't get into their their coop. And so, what I've done is I've just had to put them on lockdown um, until I can either find the snake or uh, be sure that it's um, not poisonous for one. And I, I, I don't hurt the snakes or anything like that. Because, um, like I said, they're actually very good and very needed in our ecosystem. As long as it's not poisonous. Now, if, if it's a rattler or if it's a copperhead, I'm going to have to call animal control and have them get this thing off of my yard. But for the most part, I just get black snakes and rat snakes. I've never seen a copperhead back here. Um, so, but these, these coops here are snake proof. So, nothing is going to be able to get in to here so 
And since these are the little girls, what I mean by littles, I mean bantam, they're a lot more of a bite size for a snake, I guess would be the best way to put it, than the, the larger girls, they'll just, they'll just, he'll just eat the eggs. But these little girls here, these bantams, and especially these chicks over here that are in the TARDIS, they are like a bite size meal. So I'm keeping them on lockdown right now um, until our snake situation resolves itself. Um, and to counteract the snake, all I do is I just uh, collect my eggs a little bit more often. So he'll have to go somewhere else to find a meal because I'll, I'll just I'll come out here about every oh, maybe three, four times a day and just collect the eggs that are up here in the, uh, in the country clucker. And then I have the girls in their outdoor pen out here. So here's a little ladder that connects to the, this is actually the egg door. I just have a little ladder that I got, that I like um, a movable ladder that I just connect there and they can come up and down. So having them in this area around the, uh, the coop also deters the snakes. If they're out running around in the yard out here, this coop and this area here is like vacant. So the snake pretty much has, you know, free access to anything. And so if I just keep them a little bit closer to the, to their coop, but still allow them to be out, you know, in the yard and have room to dust bait them, run and play and catch bugs and stuff, it kind of deters the snake activity around the coop. And so, I, like I said, I don't kill the snakes. Um, as long as I just want to identify it mainly, if it's a good black snake or a king snake or a rat snake, I pretty much just let it live. If it's a copperhead or a timber rattler, I'm going to have to call animal control and have them remove it for me because I do not want to get bit by that. And I don't want my girls to be bit by that. So, but I've had snakes before. It's usually pretty common when you have chickens. I'm not afraid of them. Actually, I'd like to make one a pet, but my boys are afraid of snakes. So, anyway, but yeah, so that's what I do to counteract the snake. I just collect my eggs more often, keep the girls a little closer to home, and they just, by their activity, being close to the coop and everything, the snake kind of won't come around because these girls have eaten snakes before. I mean, if there's one that gets back here, and it's unlucky enough to be found by a bunch of chickens. It's, it's gone. It's, as far as they're concerned, it's just a list of hot dog, you know. I've actually come out here before, after I get back from work or something, and found um, the skeleton of a freshly picked at snake on the, on the ground here. So I know that if they find them, they'll eat them. So yeah so i don't have to do too much except just keep the girls close to home collect the eggs more often and usually that does it but until i'm assured that the snake has kind of run off i need to keep the little girls down here in these two pens especially the chicks on lockdown so that way they don't disappear on me um eggs eggs disappearing is one thing entire chickens disappearing is something else so anyway that's our new adventure besides the uh Besides the Coupe de Ville being finished, but that's in my previous video. Uh, that is pretty much, pretty much it. And so here's my other bachelor pad. Uh, this is Henwart's, and this is uh, my Polish breeding stock. I have three buff laced Polishes. That's these buff collars here. And I have two white crested Polish roosters. This is my breeding stock. So when I want more Polishes, I get my hens that are of these breeds and I put them in a little coop with one rooster. And after they mate and of course they lay several eggs, then I go get one of my broody hens and I stick them underneath her and then I get more, more chickens that way. So this is my breeding stock here. So this is my Polish breeding stock. And I have, an, I have one more bachelor pad. Uh, right here. This is my Bantam bachelor pad. In here I have a modded cochin. So this is Enigma. He's one of my breeding roosters. And then over here over here I have a Silky. His name is Devros. He's a buff silky and he's one of my other breeding roosters. And so this is one of, this is my new coop. 
the one I just kind of, well, I've had this coop for a while. I just kind of re-rehabbed it. So it's, it's kind of a double coop. So this side is the roosters and this side is where I have to do, do my brooding of chicks. And of course there's a partition of chicken wire between the two. So they, they can't <laughs> get to each other. And the roosters have access to the pen down this little ladder right here. And so this is, this is Deb Ross. He's one of my other, my other breeding roosters. And, um, he's the father, and I, I have a couple roosters in all of my pens. So over here we have Mickey Smith. He's in, he's in here with the silkies. Hi. I don't have any roosters in this pen right now, but I will very soon. I've got a shipment of straight run white crested polishes coming. And then with the country clucker girls, I have two roosters. I have Dracula and Frankenstein. So Dracula is back there dust bathing underneath the tree. He's right there. And Frankenstein. Where's Frankenstein? Oh, he's in there. He's really pretty. That's Frankenstein right there. So I have two roosters in this coop. So yeah, all my, my pins with the girls have roosters. I just can't put all my roosters in there. And then the way the girls get outside from this pen, here's, here's the inside of this coop. Uh, this is one we built from scratch. This is the country clucker, my largest. Right here is just my pot shelf. This is just where I do my gardening, so on and so forth. Uh, these carriers down here I use when I have um, somebody that needs a timeout. <laughs> like if I have a broody, not a broody hen, but a bully hen. Or if I have one of the roosters that are just really being aggressive. This is the little timeout areas. <laughs> and so... And then over here, I just have a bunch of spices and herbs growing that I use for the chickens, like I put in their water. <clears throat> but anyway, that was not my point. But yeah, here's the coop and how, how they get out to the outside. They come up through here and over there is the exit door. That's actually the egg door. So I have two chickens. Ooh, that's one of the new ones laying. There you go. See, that's why I put the fake eggs in here. So that way they know where to lay the eggs. So there's one of the new girls sitting in the nesting box. That's a good sign. That one's busy too. You got someone coming up. And so where I collect eggs, I just put a ladder there and it's removable. And so they'll climb up that ladder and come in here to the coop. <laughs> She's like, what's going on? And then they'll just come in the coop and then down this ladder. And then of course in here they have their food and water. And they have, they have a waterer um, outside in the outdoor pen as well. So, so yeah, this is my big country clucker pen. And so, um, yeah, and then when they come down this ladder, this is the, this is, this is our outdoor area. And of course that's our extra water. And this pen also has access to this yard right here. So when these girls aren't in this yard, these boys are. Uh, but right now, <clears throat> with our snake issue, <laughs> I need these guys, these girls out here. And so, um, so yeah, so this is this is a big chicken outdoor chicken run that's connected that both both these coops have access to. So if I want these guys out, <clears throat> I just simply open up this door right here on the bottom. I hinge it up and then they just they just have an ac little access path over there and then they get back here so anyway so that's the new goings on here at the country clucker farm um, got snakes that's fun I uh, got chicks they're getting big and I have chicks arriving on Tuesday white crested Polish bantam chickens will be arriving on Tuesday so exciting so yeah anyway so that's the update here and once again i want to apologize to my neighbors for all the late night sawing and hammering on this coop here 
I just had to get it done before the chicks arrived on Tuesday. So we kind of had to work about 10.30 at night to work by the moonlight. I figure that way you can't get sunburned, right? So, but it's finished, so we'll be quiet and quiet and not annoying neighbors now. So, <laughs> anyway, but that's about it. And of course the garden's growing. Our tomato plants are huge. People often ask me what I do, what I feed my tomato plants in order to get them this big and to produce this well. And my answer is chicken poop. I do not feed my plants anything, no miracle Grow, no nothing like that, no plant food. Um, I just put chicken poop in this garden all winter long and let it sit all winter long and nourish the soil. Then in the spring when we turn it over, it's fertile. So. These are my monster tomato plants, powered by chicken poop, and of course, okra. So, anyway, that's it for now. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know what's wrong with my voice. This must be my allergies. Anyway, that's it for now. So, just wanted to get everybody a shout out on what's going on. We got wire here. I don't want to leave that there. And we'll talk to you later. You want to say bye, girls? Say bye. <laughs> the roosters will say bye. All right, we'll see y'all soon. <laughs>